We're going to demonstrate and talk about a few different ways to time events in Unity. I'm starting with a scene that has a canvas in it and a few different text fields. I have a game object called timer object with a simple script attached. So let's take a look at this script. It has a few public members for uh, text fields to hold uh, some different types of timers. In Unity, I want to make connections to those things. I'm going to use the first text field in time text, the second in delta time text, the third as a frame counter, and the fourth will keep track of a coroutine. Now back in the script, I'll start updating some of these text fields once per frame using the update function. The first one I'm going to use is the time class and its time attribute, which simply is a record of the time in seconds since the start of the game, and that's a floating point value. So I'll use time.time .time and uh, place that into the text field. So time text dot text equals Okay, I'll save this and look at it in Unity. Now I can see that my time.time .time field is updating. It's showing me how many seconds uh, as a floating point value since the beginning of the game. The next one I want to look at is delta time text. So I'm going to input for the delta time text field. I'll write delta time, and then the value of time dot delta time. The delta time is the time in seconds, again, a floating point value since the last frame. Now when I run this test, I'll see that delta time stays consistently around 0 0.016, which is about 1 60th of a second. If I want to use delta time to time events, then I need to keep track of how much delta time is added up. So I'll add a member to this class. It'll be private uh, floating point value, and I'll call this Delta counter, and I'll initialize this to zero. Then on the frame update, I'll add delta counter and the plus equals operator to increment by the value that I specify on the right hand side of the expression. So plus equals time dot delta time. So that will add the delta time to whatever this value was set to. And I'll print this out to the screen as well. Now I end up with delta time showing around 0 0.016 and the elapsed time is going to be pretty close to time.time, .time, if not exactly the same. It's a little bit hard to tell because the numbers are changing so quickly. The next kind of timer I want to look at is the frame count. So the frame count text field, I will set this to say frame count. And the time class keeps track of this for us. It's pretty simple actually. So time dot frame count and save. Now I press play and the frame count should start to increment. Starts at zero, starts counting up. And finally, I'll introduce the idea of a coroutine. Now coroutines in Unity 
rely on the iEnumerator class. So I'll declare a new function with iEnumerator as the return type. I'll name this something simple like timer coroutine. And in order to use this as a timer, I need to yield execution. So we'll use the yield keyword, then return. And at this point, we need a new um, sum object that will return the I enumerator. So I'll do new wait for seconds and then a second count. So let's say 3.0 float. And then after execution is returned to this function, I can set a value like coroutine counter text. And I haven't declared any sort of counter variable to hold this, so I'll make a new private integer. Call this coroutine counter. Initialize to zero. And print that here, coroutine counter, but also increment the coroutine counter. Now that I have the coroutine configured, I still need to start it at some point. So we'll do that within the start function at the beginning of the game. We need to use the start coroutine function and then name the coroutine. We'll do timer coroutine. Save. And when I press play, I should see the coroutine count increment after three seconds. So that starts counting. And it doesn't continue after that. In order to understand why, we'll go back to the script and see that this coroutine, it starts and it does yield execution for three seconds and then return uh, but after that, it just stops. Once the end of the coroutine is reached, it finishes execution, and it will need to be started again with the start coroutine call if you want to see it run again. On the other hand, the coroutine itself, if we put a loop in here, then it'll execute uh, more than once. I'll try a while loop. And with a while loop, the expression that goes in these parentheses should evaluate true or false. And if it's true, then the code inside the block will execute. Otherwise, it will skip and essentially end the coroutine. So the simplest thing I can do is use the expression while true in which case this will always execute. It'll yield for three seconds and then on the next frame, it'll run again. So this will run once, wait three seconds, uh, run again, wait three seconds, run again. Back to Unity, I can verify that by playing this and watching the counter increment. Now it's up to three and it should keep going forever. If I want this to stop at some point, then I'll want to introduce a condition. So because I've already started keeping track of the number of times this coroutine is run, I can set a, an arbitrary endpoint. So let's say while coroutine count Uh, coroutine counter. While coroutine counter is less than, let's say, three, and because I'm choosing an arbitrary value here, I may actually want to offset this into another member field. I'll call this uh, public. 
So it'll be exposed in the Unity editor. Integer coroutine max count. And I'll initialize that to three and put that value or that variable here, coroutine max count. And in Unity on my timer object, I see that that max count is here. I could set this to whatever I want. But for now, let's see if it works by getting to three and then stopping. Now I can see that it has reached three and is not going beyond that, even though enough time has elapsed for it to run several more times if it hadn't already ceased execution. So that's a few ways you can track time in Unity.